What's up? What's up on the midday, man? We got so much going on. Coop, how you doing, sir? What's going on? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Good to speak to you. And um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about today, man. We're going we're gonna to talk about this versus that happened last night and everything around it, right? Um, yes, sir. We'll go track for track with the Fat Joe and Ja Rule versus for those who didn't see it. And, you know, we'll probably broadcast it live on According to Hip Hop, you know, sometime later on the day for the people who missed it. But the big conversation, and we'll just jump right into it, man. Um, Diddy had this little back and forth with Jermaine Dupri, too. Um, actually, you know what? Let me just go over all the topics for the people who are just coming in the room. Go talk about Diddy and Jermaine Dupri's back and forth on the potential verses. We're going to talk about T.I.'s response to what Diddy said to Jermaine Dupri. Like I said, we're going to talk about the actual verses, and we'll talk about Nas getting the cover of Ebony Magazine as well. But I do want to jump into this. Uh, shout out to Rodriguez in the room. I want to jump into this, man. Um, let me just go to the actual quote. So last night, Jermaine Dupri was like, yo, somebody let Diddy know I'm in the garden right now, and he going to need some training for me. You know, going for a potential versus with Diddy. Diddy's response was, Beloved, you my nigga, but your arms are too short to box with God. You ain't got enough hits. I'll smash you with just Biggie and Mary. But I do have the utmost respect for you as a musical legend. Dre is the only one that can get in the ring with me. Love. What do you think about that? I think it's very problematic that he said those things in the disrespectful manner and nature that he did. <laughs> yeah. He he almost sunned him in a sense. Uh I don't you know what I don't like he tried, is, no, 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 he tried to sun him like like for real. And since he did, and I mean I'm just gonna go ahead and say it live, like what tracks is he talking about that he actually did the beats to? Cause Jermaine Dupri knows how to make a beat from scratch by himself with nobody else in the room. Right. And you know, with all due respect, I feel like when ATL. I think of Biggie, I oh. think of Easy Mo B on a production level with, you know, the hits and the big songs that we really know uh, from Big. And when I think of Mary, I think of Chuck Thompson. Rest in peace. Um, so I want to know exactly what Biggie and Mary records he's specifically talking about that he was smashed Jermaine on alone. Yeah, Mike, because you brought up Easy Mo B and Chucky. I'm going to bring up Stevie J. Right. Dot and Machine Myrick as well. Mario Winans. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's problematic in that sense where I don't like the, you know, going on social media and giving a public perception of things, right? Like, he's given a public perception that, A, he did all of Biggie's stuff. That's what one could take from that that doesn't know the details, right? Very and, problematic. Right, right. And, B, that <laughs> Jermaine doesn't have 20 hits. He said, you don't have enough hits. And, see, my thing is the banter would be cool if you accepted the challenge. And you just basically dismiss someone who has some of the biggest records of, I mean, just of all time on his resume from Mariah Carey to Usher. Um, the Brats, the first female to go platinum. Um, Chris Cross, he had number one records before Puffy even started getting production credit. Hey, hey, Mike, <clears throat> like you remember tonight's the night by Chris Cross? Yes. I think we've talked about, um, Young, Rich, and Dangerous on this show. Yeah. Mike, th that album was extremely well produced, and there are some bangers on that album. I don't care, like, how you feel about, like, the kitty hip-hop thing or, like, crisscross or, like, even when I go on my Will Smith rants that I've done before, it's, like, good hip-hop and well-produced stuff is, like, it's is, is just that in all uh, shape, sizes, forms, and age brackets. And... Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that he did, not just on Young, Rich, and Dangerous, but on Totally Crossed Out and The Bomb. Like, Mike, when Warm It Up Chris comes on, no, I still play that shit. All right, with well, Supercat is a great record. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, not even just on some kitty shit, whatever, however people want to feel about that. But back to Young, Rich, and Dangerous, I feel like he transitioned them out 
of their childhood image with Tonight's Tonight. Uh, songs like Living Die for Hip Hop with the Brad, Aaliyah, Mr. Black killed that record, by the way. It's Jermaine's Mike. verse is dope on there, by the way. Mike, but, the first record, some cut up. Some cut up was dope. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we can't forget, you know, the, the uh, DJ Screw classic that comes from that album, a Jermaine Dupri produced record, you know, that June 27th. But, so, and also, too, Mike, and I'm glad you brought up, you know, um, Usher and Mariah, because when he said Mary, the first thing I stopped and said to myself, I was like, well, what about my way of the emancipation of Mimi? Like, what about that? Those aren't like, Mike, those aren't like regular R&B albums, like on any sort of level, like on a hit level, on a production level, on a songwriting level. Right. Uh, Brian Blinker says, do we really want JD versus Puffy? All right, well, do we really want Puffy versus anybody? Because honestly, JD, to me, when you look at it, is the best comparable matchup to Puff. I know Puff said he wants Dr. Dre, but see, Dr. Dre, we all know. I mean, let's just keep it real. Dr. Dre was smashed, Puff. With the Sonics alone, you know what I'm saying? And that's no disrespect I don't would know have to what play Puff every single on. Biggie record to make it a viable. I mean, you know, again, I'm a person who sat here behind this mic and before the Snoop and DMX verses and said, those Dr. Dre beats come through the speakers different. They just do. But when it comes to, you know, being able to mesh hip hop and R&B together as producers, I think JD is the most comparable person to Puff. Um, if not, if we want to dig deeper in it, I think he could probably beat Puff in that. And for Puff to dismiss that, I I don't know, man. Like I said, I think that people who are speaking on this in this way are kind of looking at that public perception that Puff put out there like JD doesn't have it. You know what I'm saying? Those JD records have lasted a very long time. And like I told you offline, for the people who don't know at home, Puffy got the first crack at Usher. Well, Usher yeah. is a new artist. Yeah. Uh, L.A. Reid sent Usher up there, up to New yep. York, to live with Puff, make his first yep. album. Yep. It didn't meet expectations. The next assignment was given to J.D., and then you got My Way. And I mean, he and, and the artist that Usher became, or the artist we know today, or we hold him high for, that's under Jermaine Dupri's tutelage. And I think these are the type of producers we're talking about, right? Because we're not talking about... I, no one's ever seen Puff behind the beat machine, right? No one's ever seen Puff construct the track. So I'm thinking that Puff's talking about his production in the sense of him being able to mold artists and get them into a zone that they wouldn't have gotten in before, like Biggie getting on Juicy. He wouldn't have done that on his own. But if you want to talk about that and how Jermaine Dupri has transitioned groups like Escape, he transitioned Usher. He made Ar Usher into the artist he is today, Criss Cross. Not to mention the iconic Bow Wow. Y'all want to laugh at Bow Wow, but when Bow Wow came in the gate, he took everything. And when Jermaine Dupri and when Bow Wow left Jermaine, he wasn't Bow Wow anymore. He had to come back. So if we're talking about that kind of producer, yeah. <laughs> I think we do want to see this. I want to see it. I mean, Mike, that's why I said when he said Mary and opened up the R&B door, because, Mike, I had a little star by something, and you brought it up, Mike. Escape. Off the hook, Mike. Escape's better than Total. And they showed it in their verses. And I was right. one of those people that was being very hard on Escape. No, no, no. But let's talk about Jermaine, too. And so, mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> something that's very understated about Jermaine Dupree that we always give Dr. Dre credit for, and he's not at that level, but he might be the closest person to it, probably him and Timberland or Neptunes. The, Chris, the crispness and the clarity of when the shit knocks in the speaker. That's why I'm bringing up Escape. Like, songs like Feel So Good, like Mike, when it comes through the speaker, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It hits different. Like that Young, Rich, and Dangerous albums, the crispness of those beats, it hits different when yeah. Tonight's the Night comes through the speakers, Mike. It's live. It's stadium flow. Yeah. Jermaine Dupri's stadium flow is very underrated and understated. Like, his record's going to come through them speakers, and it's going to knock, Mike. Yeah. I'm Mike, gonna, pump the five, Mike. Pump the five, Mike. Like, in the same sense, <laughs> Puff wants to call Jermaine a legend, but then sons him at the same time, and it's like, 
What a back backhanded compliment. I mean, because if we're talking about legendary records and just their work in the industry, to say he doesn't have enough hits, I think Very that's perfect. the yeah that that's the part that's disrespectful. Just like what we covered um, last week when Memphis Week said Nas didn't have twenty songs or didn't have right. enough songs. Like, come on, man. Now, if you feel right. yeah, go ahead. Oh, just just real quick. No, yeah. no lie. Just on these four albums, he has enough to do a versus, and that's Funkified, Off the Hook, My Way, and Emancipation of Mimi. There are enough records on those four albums to do a versus with Jermaine Dupree. Why is everyone... I, I don't know, man. It feels like... just It reminds me of like the 2000s. No, like, no, no. Did I miss something? Did he not produce these albums? No, no, Did you're he, right. He didn't uh, produce these albums. Mike, when you listen to male R&B... The last twenty years, I mean, it it sounds like a, a my way handbook. This is the thing, man, because we're talking about so so deaf and bad boy. We're talking, we talking about oh, so so deaf no. and bad. Let's just talk about so so deaf and bad boy outside of the you know the outside uh, work that the two producers have done. They're very, they have a very similar makeup. It reminds me of um, you know the Indiana Pacers in the nineties and the New York Knicks. Like when you look at how those teams were made up, very like similar makeups. Like, I like that. yeah, the, the the big power forwards, yeah, tall center that could shoot out a distance, smart heady point guard play, veteran leadership, yeah, tough hard nosed grinding teams, rebounding defense, loose right. balls, yeah, yeah. But I think that you know we all kind of held Bad Boy as a hip hop label, but Bad Boy is just as much of an R and B label as it was a hip hop label. Right? Yes. And I think we could say the same thing for So So Death. Very similar and diverse in that way. I think the Jagged Edge is a better group than 112. What do you think? Yes, I, I prefer Jagged Edge's uh, peak records to 112's peak records. Yes. I think Escape's a better group than Total. What say you? Yeah. Yeah, Mike. I mean, they don't have nothing uh, messing with Off the Hook. Like, Off the Hook is brilliant. I'm going to throw you for a loop on this one. Who do you think's the better rapper? Jermaine Dupri or Puff? <laughs> uh, you know, Mike, I mean, it's... Does I'm Puffy have a, a, a song I'm ambivalent, he... I'm, I'm ambivalent about that totally, but I mean, if you wanted to tell me that uh, Jermaine Dupri would have like, more like natural like zest on the mic, like, I, think I, he does. I, I would give that to you. I think he does. You know, the back and forth with the Brad on Functify, the back and forth with, Jermaine, uh, with Jay-Z on Money Ain't a Thing. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. That's what I'm saying. No, yeah. Mike, uh, Life in 14. Oh, Mike, we forgot about Life in 14. I was going to bring that up. Ooh, Mike, that up. Mike, you want to know, like, my favorite, one of my favorite just, like, hip-hop records is the joint with Crazy Bone and the Brett. Yeah. Nigga, don't you hate on me. Why don't you go and get you some? Oh. Yeah. He's got... <laughs> These, you know what these guys like, uh, he, he's he's rapping with Nas back and forth on turn it out a little bit you know my favorite song on that record my favorite it's oh, get actually your shit my, right hmm? get your shit right with DMX nah nah it's actually probably my favorite Jermaine Dupri record the one with Slick Rick Fresh Fresh is crazy that's what I'm saying look Mike <laughs> I was actually thinking get your shit right you remember get your shit right with mm -hmm. DMX and the Mad Rapper that shit was crazy too it's, I think somebody else did that beat though as classic as No Way Out is I would say Jermaine Dupri has given a better rap performance on uh, 1492 than Puff was on No Way Out. Now, No Way Out's the better album. No Way Out's the better album, better rap performance, JD, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know what was funny about that JD album? Outside of Money Ain't a Thing and maybe Fresh, that album's really not that glossed up. You it's know what I mean? It's kind of gritty. That's the Primo Snoop connection, too. And that's that uh, member to get dealt with, with uh, Mace. I like that record. And I was going to mention Mace because he had a relationship with Mace after uh, after Mace's Bad Boy stint, right? Or was that during the Bad Boy stint? Because he did that Harlem know. World deal. I mean, you Mace. know, Mike, Mike, their come up it's is around the same time. So they had their hands on a lot of the same people. Mike, you want to know where he could sneak jab at Puff at? The B side, the yeah, Brett and Biggie. Well, you know what? When when Puff said what he said, that was the first song I thought about. I like love that. Like with that B side, Mike. Yeah. Because yeah. when Big came through, you never knew that you never had a clue on who was the king of the street. 
Four deep in a Range Rover Jeep. Cats under the seat. Got my homeboy came home for work, really. Yeah. I love that record, by the way. I, I have a long story about me trying to find that record as a kid, and it was actually in my closet the whole time. But like, he's, like, he's got dope produced records. You know what I remember off Funkified? You want to know what my favorite record on Funkified was? Give it um, to your remix for me. Give it to you remix was hard too. Mike uh, made a funk be with you and the song with crisscross. Uh, come and get some. Get yeah. down. Ain't no room to mess around when the brat tat tat tat's all up in your town. I'm in the front with a blunt, never play in the back. It's that new nigga on the block <laughs> and I don't slack. Ta da. But man. See, you know what I don't like about, you know, these responses? Like what Nori was doing with Siegel. It's like you want to sit here and kind of downplay people for folks that don't know. They're going to think that Jermaine's not on Puff's level, but he actually is. This is probably as a producer. Obviously, Puff is a mogul and as a personality, he's something else in that light. But we talk about the music. Y'all aren't that different. And Mike. honestly, I think that JD could give it to him because there's a lot of records that J people don't know that JD did. Mike, and, and that's the other part Atlanta. of it. I don't know what records Puff is going to play. Mike, welcome to Atlanta. Yeah. I don't know what records Puff is going to play, though. Like, what records can we say, okay, no, so, Puff was so just think, on the board? I, I think, see, so I think what we really need to do, Mike, is separate some things. Now, if you want to talk about branding, marketing, management, Puff, but if we're talking about the production, beat maker, what is yeah, what does a producer do? What does a producer do? I think do? I think I think I think with Puff, because he's the total package in so many things, that we all kind of swoop it into one. We talking about production if we talking about a versus like your branding and your marketing and your management genius don't come into play. What comes into play is the records that you've produced. I was gonna say, what does a producer do though? I mean, they do a lot of things. I mean that very what is the question. producer's main very job question. to get the best out of an artist, right? I mean, I mean, here's my thing is that like for me, what a great producer does is they either provide a framework for a track that brings out greatness in an artist or they put their hands on an artist and construct tracks based on what the artist does. So what Riz is great at is both. And the proof is when you hear the purple tape and hear Liquid Swords. Like the purple tape is full of just beats that are perfect for Ray and Ghost. The design of Liquid Swords is, is like, no, I got to do something special specifically for this guy to rap to to follow up what I just did over there. It's two ways of going about it. What artist yeah. would you say that Puff molded into the artist that we know of today? I mean, Biggie? the fact that, I mean, I mean, so we gonna give him some credit for, for, for molding Big a little bit because Big wanted Machine Gun Funk to be the first single off of Ready to Die. So that probably was gonna play well with cats like me, but that probably wasn't gonna play well in the big picture no. when he had Juicy and Big Papa. And, yeah. With all right, with no puff, Big doesn't make Juicy, Big Papa, that one more chance remix, uh, uh, more money, more problems. I would give Puff that he he made Biggie into the artist that we would say is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, MC of all time. Right. So I you give him big. He, did? he injected the versatility that nobody's been able to match since. I mean, if we want to give him credit for anything, he injected the versatility into Biggie. Yeah. And when Within he the culture injected that versatility, the guy that shows up on Life After Death about after being injected with that versatility for a few years is just like, yeah. you got it. You got it. Uh, Mary. Yeah. I give him Mary, too. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. give them Mary. But here's the thing, too. It's like, you know, I mean, Mike, I, I, I don't go back and listen to my life and what's the 411. I listen to Share My World and Mary more because it's kind of more uplifting. Right. That right. Like, but he did that, sense? too. Him and Chucky Thompson did that, too. And I think they that put what? her they in. Did they didn't do Mary and Share My World. They didn't do Share My World. I'm, no, they didn't. You she know broke what? I'm for Share My World. She did. Uh, she went to. Uh, uh, I think. I think everybody had their hands on that. I think Jimmy Jam and Terry was up in there. Uh, I think Rodney yeah, yeah. was up in there. Okay. Like she went ham with everybody. R. Kelly uh, went in there and did some work with her. Like she went everywhere on that. What about Mace? You give him credit for Mo to Mace. 
Oh, yeah, because he was Murder Mace. Okay. I'm, that's what I'm saying, though. But listen to the things you're talking about. You're talking about branding. You're talking about marketing. You're talking about management. You're but not you're talking not about talking the production about of the records. Right. Okay. Right. All right. But this is what I'll give JD. I'll give him Usher. Right? Definitely. Chris, Chris Cross. The Definitely. Brad. Definitely. Escape. Definitely. Bow Wow. Definitely. These are huge. <laughs> these are huge stars. Now these are all, these are all multi-platinum. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know what? And there there is a story about the fact that you know T. Boz found Mike. her voice working with Jermaine Dupri. Like Mike. that. Mike. Yeah. You got Mariah invited back to the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Let Mariah back into the barbecue. Be like, no, 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 no. That's too dope. Let her back in. Come on. You can always come home. Come on. He told T Boz to sing in the tone that we know uh, TLC familiar for. So, yeah, if you want to talk about what a producer does and molding artists and getting them to get in a lane where they go, I don't know. There's a real tough argument that Jermaine Dupri has done a better job of that as a producer. And he never really, as an artist, well, his artist, um, uh, let's just say his goals as an individual, he never let that stunt the growth of any of his other artists. Now, some would say, I mean, Puff has more albums on Bad Boy Records than anybody in the history of Bad Boy Records. No one on Bad Boy. Yeah, he does. Does he? Yeah, he got like six records. No one on Bad Boy has more than three albums. You know, it was once said about him that if you wanted anybody to start your career, it would be Puff. And they might be right about that, because if you're just talking about out the gate, he's, you know what I mean? You're going to pay a yeah. price for that. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's, you know, we, it's a whole nother conversation for another day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Lex Diamond says, um, oh, he's talking about Rizzo. Huh? Let me go up and go into the comments. Lex Diamond says, star, right. the Star Report sent me here. What up, Lex Diamonds? What up, Star? Appreciate you coming in. Um, Brian says, oh, will Puffy not outstage JD or would the features decide this one? Uh, that's a good question. That's, but, but but I'm going to keep on asking this question. What Biggie records are you talking about? That's because the it's part so that confuses Because who shot you? Nasheem Myrick produced who shot you? This is true. This is true. I, 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 well, that's that's the... Shit. Mike, Mike, who did 10 Crack Commandments Kick in the Door and Unbelievable? That's DJ Premier. DJ Premier. Who did Most of Ready to Die? Easy Mo B. Machine yeah. Gun Funk is Easy Mo B. Warning, Easy Mo B. Ready to die the record, Mike? Easy Moby. Like, what, what are we? You know, I'm about to pull up Ready to Die's uh, credits right now because I'm Mike, thinking. Mike, Long Kiss Goodnight, RZA, um, Last Days, Havoc. You're, you're pulling them out, man. You're right. I mean, didn't uh, didn't Stevie J produce Hypnotize and Sky's the Limit? Like, I'm just, I'm just. I'm looking at Ready to Die right now. And, no, you know, for the like people who. Death. You know, you look up life after death. Let me life read out ready death, to die. I mean, it's ready to die is easy, Mike. It's like easy Moby, DJ Premier. No, it is. <laughs> no, but just just for the people at home, right? right. Ready to die, you got things that change. That's Daryl Scott. I'm sorry, Darnell Scott. Giving the loop, easy Moby. Machine Gun Funk, easy Moby. Warning, easy Moby. Ready to die, easy Moby. One more chance. That's where you got Chucky Thompson, Combs, the Blues Brothers. But again, that's the regular one. I don't know what the credits are like on the Stay With Me, um, you know, the, the, the DeBarge version, that remix. All right. Fuck Me, Interlude, that's Puffy. That's an interlude that's not going to get played. The What, Easy Moby. Juicy, Pope, from Tone and Pope, and Puff, right? Everyday Struggle, <laughs> Blues Brothers. Me and My Bitch, Blues Brothers, Chucky Thompson, and Combs' name is on there. Carlos Brody, that's the producer we were forgetting about that was contributing to. Carlos Brody. Shout out to Carlos Brody. Bro I'm sorry, Carlos Brody, who did a lot of great work on Supreme Clientele, too. He did do work on Clientele. Yes, um, he did. So, like, Papa. him and Machine Myrick produced Somebody Gotta Die. Mm -hmm. Derek Dot and Amin Ra, Lawrence. Ron Lawrence. Hold uh, on, hold on one, one second. Let me finish this Ready to Die real quick. I'm going to let you go. Um, yeah, Big Papa, Chucky Thompson, and Puffy. Um, respect, that's uh, Pope from Tone and Pope and Puff. Friend of mine, Easy Moby, Unbelievable, DJ Premier, Suicide Thoughts, Lord Finesse. 
So the only pe- only songs on I here. I didn't know Lord Finesse did suicidal thoughts. Okay. Right, right, right. So there are no Puff songs on here where it's just his name. Fine. The one the ones where his name appears are Juicy, Big Papa, and Me and My Bitch. And one more chance. But again, this ain't the remix. I can look up the remix real quick just to see. But yeah, though we're talking three records here. Now go ahead. So go on your life after death. Now let's go to life after death, Mike, because I mm-hmm. mean so somebody's gotta die is Nasheen Myrick and Carlos Brody. It's got it's got Puff with a production credit on there. Uh Hypnotize is Derek D Dot and Ron Lawrence. Puff's got a production credit on there. Kicking the door is DJ Premier. Uh Darren Jones and Puff are giving credit for fucking you tonight. Last day is Havoc, Puffy, and Stevie J. I love the dough is Easy Mo B. What's beef is Nasheen Myrick and Carlos Brody again. They did all the hard shit on this album, and I love them for it. Because these are some, like, like the stuff that Nasheen and Carlos did on, on Life After Death, that's the stuff that's stuck, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. More Money, More Problems is Puff. Niggas Bleed is Carlos Brody, Stevie J, Nasheen Myrick, Puff got a credit on there. I got a story to tell is Buck Wild, Chucky Thompson's Puff's got a credit on there. Notorious Thugs is Stevie J, Puff's got a credit. Missy was KG, actually. Uh, going back to Cali is Easy Mo B. Another is Stevie J. Combs got a credit on there. Ten Crack Commandments is Puff. Play a Hater is Stevie J. Combs got a credit on there. Says he produced Nasty Boy by himself. Sky's the Limit is Clark Kent and Biggie. The World is Filled is Derek B. Dot. My Downfall, which is my favorite record, my favorite Biggie record, is Carlos Brody. Long Kisses Rizza. I mean, Mike, if he produced your nobody till somebody kills you, which he's the only production credit on, that's his masterpiece of a work. If I was just about to say that because I'm if looking. If <laughs> Puff did your nobody till somebody kills you, I'm just gonna be quiet a little bit. That's still not enough. That's one song, that, and, and we talk. If, and he said hits. He's that's not his talking production about masterpiece. If he did that, record. no, no, I agree with you, and I never knew that. And I was reading along with you while you were going through this, and I was looking at. You know, I, that, somebody I know. Killed. I saw that when I first went through, and I was just like, "I'm gonna need to hear the story about how that record got made." Now, okay. So most of Puff's production credits are assisted with, I mean, not just some regular guys, some pretty big time producers, right? Regular guys. No. Machine Myrick did shit on the War Report too for Capone and Noriega. Yeah. He did the original version of Project Window for I Am that actually sounds great. Like Machine Myrick's a beast. Yes, Machine Myrick's a beast. We know Pope from Tone and Poke is a beast, right? Um, right. I mean, we could go through Jermaine's production credits too, but I know we would be here all day. But the yeah. bottom line is, he said he could do it with Biggie Records alone, and it looks like the only Biggie Records that he would be able to play are what Juicy, Big Papa, Mo no Money, No Problems, and You're Nobody Till Somebody. Kills. I don't think he would play that because he's talking about hits. With right. sicker, more style, more sicker No, than you know how before. incredible that record is. Before, draw, has my pilot, steers my Leah, yes, my dear, shit's official. Let me ask oh, you this, Coop. You know in the music that you know, do you believe Puffy made you know by the Somebody Kills You by himself? Mike, it's so, such a masterful record. I just have a hard time believing it. When you're looking <laughs> at how, just don't. <laughs> maybe maybe I just don't want to believe it because of how I feel about that record. Mike, I told you those last three songs is the greatest ending to any rap album ever, Mike. My Downfall, Long Kiss, Good Night, You're Nobody Till Somebody Kills You. That's how you end a rap album. Well, you know what, man? I, again, knowing all of these things and knowing what JD's resume <laughs> is, I, I, I can't help but think that Puff's response, for the people who just got in the room, let me go over this response again. JD was like, yo, Puff, basically, let's do a versus, right? Then he says, beloved, you my nigga, but your arms are too short to box with God. You ain't you ain't got enough hits. I'll smash you with just Biggie and Mary. But I do have the utmost respect on, uh, I'm sorry, utmost respect on you as a musical legend. Dre is the only one that could get in the ring with me. Love. Mike, Mike, you want to know it? No, we got to get to the next topic, and so yeah. I'm going, I'm going to end it like this. 
there's a difference between making the record and owning the record. Just because you own the record don't mean you made it. Jermaine makes and owns. You know what? Uh, before we go to the next topic, I mean, just reading that again, I'm like, yo, what do you have against JD? Because you remember when he did that interview with uh, on Drink Champs? And, you know, that famous Suge Knight thing with Suge Knight was at the Source Awards in 95 and was like, you know, if you're not singing, I mean, if you're not dancing in the video, yada, yada. He told Noriega that he talked to Suge Knight at the after party. And Suge Knight said he was talking about Jermaine Dupri. Now, where does Jermaine's name come in at? Like, look, what, what's going on, man? Come on, man. Suge Knight wasn't talking about Jermaine Dupri, man. All right, let, let's just keep it a buck. 